In this video, I'm going to just show you how to navigate the basic options and settings in ERG video to customize your riding environment. We're going to skip over the configure riders, bikes, and devices because this is the most involved piece that we're going to dedicate separate videos to. So, from the main configuration screen, and in fact every screen, we have options and settings. So click Options and Settings to navigate this with me. The first tab that shows up is the Riders tab. This is where you define rider characteristics who come to your studio. It might just be you. Um, in fact, in this list, I've got me here, Paul Smolders. But if you have people coming and going into a studio, or if you have some friends coming over to, to ride your CompuTrainer, or if you have more than one uh, kicker or CompuTrainer, uh, you'll want to uh, create a specific rider for each one. So let's just add a new rider and you'll see that it comes pre-filled in. So let's just put in Simpson. I like the Simpsons. We'll put in Homer. Uh, his nickname, I don't know what his nickname is. Jebediah, I think is his middle name. Uh, wait. <laughs> let's, let's be generous. And let's just say he's about, uh, let's say you can do 230 watts. Now, of all the settings in ERG video, this is the most critical. The weight actually doesn't matter unless, for the, uh, unless it's for the simulation for the threshold test. The weight of the bike doesn't really matter and even the wheel circumference is, is incidental. All of these things just affect a few measurements but they don't change the experience. The most important um, parameter is the functional threshold power. That is the power level from which all of your efforts, all of the load is calibrated from. So you want to have a good idea of what is your functional threshold power. Um, look up trainingpeaks.com uh, power411 and look up FTP or functional threshold power and how to test it and how to get it. Um, we actually offer ERG videos that will very accurately test your functional threshold power. This is what needs to be entered. If it's too high, you're going to find ERG video too hard to ride because it scales all of the efforts against this number. And it may make you work too hard or harder than intended. And if it's too low, then you're not going to feel as much resistance as, as would be beneficial to your training. So you want to get a good idea of that for each person and enter it here. You can sometimes guess and during the ride um, it is possible to actually increase and decrease this level so that you can, you always have a bailout during the ride if, uh, if it gets too hard. Okay, pushing on, we actually see um, if they have personal ant devices assigned to them, it's listed here. Certainly because Homer is new, he doesn't have any devices assigned, but if I look at Ned, we can see that he's got a couple of sensors um, assigned to him. Just We just have the uh, ant plus ID for each sensor that he has. Finally at the bottom, this is for Velotron users only. Velotrons have a single physical gear and to do simulations um, of, of road simulations, and, and again, this goes back to the threshold test where we actually use a grade-based simulation, not a power-regulated uh, simulation, you will want a gear table. So Velotron users will want to enter what, what um, gear teeth they have on their virtual rear cog set and their virtual crank set. Here I've, I've got only two rings up front, possibility for three, and ten at the back. Okay. The next tab is general settings. <coughs> you have a choice of a music player between a no music player, the Windows Media Player. This will give you access to your Windows Media Player playlists um, that you've set up through Windows Media Player somewhere on your PC. You also have access to iTunes. So this will actually launch your iTunes application and on the ERG video screen you will have controls that actually allow you to control playback of your of your iTunes or your Windows Media Player playlists. Um, I'll do that. 
I've actually taken to not using my Windows Media Player, and that's just a personal thing because, or, or even my iTunes, I don't even have iTunes. Um, personal thing is, is that I don't buy a lot of music myself. Um, I just stream Spotify. And, you know, it's a free service. You can, you can pay for it and, and eliminate the ads, or you can just put up with the ads. Um, I just put up with the ads. They're not too bad. It's a little bit annoying during a threshold test to have an ad come up and it kind of throws you off. But um, suit yourself. Uh, I have a, a Spotify account. Yeah. And uh, I play that. And I can actually access all the controls at the bottom while I'm riding. It's quite nice. So I'll close that for a second. Um, setting the US, U, the units to, to uh, miles, feet, pounds, or meters, uh, kilograms, kilometers. You can actually do uh, some of the uh, data fields while you're riding uh, can be changed. Uh, the units can be changed while you're riding. Threshold increment refers to that bailout key on, on your, uh, in your riding environment. If you found that the threshold you set back here is too high or too low, you can change it uh, from the keypad and each key press is going to go either 1 watt, 5 watts, or 10 watts, up or down, because you have an up and down key. I like to set it at 5 watts. That's, that's fine enough. This is a new setting uh, in ERG Video 4. Instead of just scanning for CompuTrainers and Velotrons, you set up to, to scan for Ant Plus devices, Wahoo, and RacerMate trainers. That's the default. Basically, RacerMate trainers, you need to scan the COM ports. For everything else, you just scan uh, what's coming into your little Ant Plus dongle stick. If you have no Ant Plus devices at all and just RacerMate devices, you could click that and save yourself a couple of seconds, a couple of dialog screens uh, while it's scanning. Um, so for example, if you don't have an AMP Plus dongle at all, um, if you just set scan only for RacerMate devices, then you won't get the, the irritation screens that come up and say, hey, I didn't find an AMP Plus device. I didn't find an AMP Plus dongle. Uh, what's wrong with you? Well, if you set it here, then, then um, you won't be bothered by those uh, dialogues. But the default is to scan for everything, and if you don't have an AMP Plus device, it'll, it'll certainly pop up and tell you you don't. Okay, performance file format. This is new. Uh, it used to be only the legacy CSV format that RacerMate established many years ago. It's been overtaken quite a bit by the Garmin Fit format, which is um, compatible with Strava, Garmin Connect, uh, Training Peaks, just about everywhere. It's uh, becoming a very standardized format. So that's our default now, Fit format. You can choose to go back to CSV, or you can actually choose to have both formats generated. Um, fit format is, is the default. This checkbox will take all of, every for every session, say you have a session of eight or ten riders, instead of giving them, they're definitely going to get separate performance files, but it's kind of handy for each session to have everyone in that session be compressed into its own zip folder. That way you don't have a whole lot of separate files that you need to figure out, oh, they were all here on this day. This will just pack it into one zip file for each session that you conduct in your multi-rider center. The, the default is for it to be unchecked, um, because most home users, they're just one rider anyway, and you know you can, you can live with a separate file. Finally, this last checkbox, show a warm-up report before, sorry, so show warm-up report summary before a test. Threshold test is conducted in two phases. A warm-up, and then it stops, saves your performance, and then it goes to the test. In between, it can show a browser to show you the results of your warm-up. Some people find that um, annoying. Some people find it necessary. The default is to show you that summary report, but if you don't like it, just turn it off. Finally, we'll go to the last tab. This is where you can manually manage your library and training plans. Think of it as um, a way to add songs to your playlists or 
something like that. What really happens under the covers here is when you download an ERG video, it goes into a default location on your hard drive, and it also updates a little index file that tells ERG video where to find all of your downloaded videos. So um, I'm going to just do that in front of your face, remove one from my library. So it can also happen that if you're running ERG video while you do a download, the two applications will compete for writing the library and sometimes um, uh, the, the, the last one to write the library will have precedence. And so you might find that you've downloaded an ERG video and it didn't show up in your library. And what, why that's important is when it's not in your library, it's not in this list. So you're sure you downloaded it. Go to Add. And this is now the, the default folder where the ERG video downloader puts videos. If you redirected the download, you'll have to navigate to the place where you manually redirected the download. But generally speaking, if you don't touch anything, for, uh, if you let it be automatic, it'll go into this file folder or this directory on your hard drive and each video has its own folder. So I found Tormalay East, I found the EVR file, in there is also the, the uh, video file, but it's not showing in this dialog. Click Open, and it adds it to your library. If the video is still locked, if you haven't unlocked it, then it's going to give you an opportunity to unlock it here, or the next time you try to launch it from um, ERG Video uh, to Ride. So that's just a way to, to be able to move, move uh, uh, videos around and also have videos at different places in your system wherever they fit if you've got trouble with your hard disk for example or, or a hard disk filling up you can put it out onto other hard disks finally let's just look at the training plans box here erg video has a, a way to integrate training plans based on your erg videos that is at the website we'll start there Go to Training Plans. I'll go to Training Plan Builder. Now this video is not going to be about, about building training plans. I'm just going to show you that this is a, a utility on our website that you can get. You can actually upload your uh, library file so that this web, so the website knows what ERG videos you have and it will generate a training plan for you up to 24 weeks uh, based on those videos. Ultimately, you get save a training plan. You get a file from this website um, and it asks you where do you want to save it. I don't like putting it on my um, I don't like putting it on my uh, desktop. I like to put it here. Okay, so I've saved it, and the net, that instruction said you have to manually add it to your environment. So I'm going to close the website, and you can see here that it did not add it immediately. I'm going to say Add Plan, and it goes back to where the default location is for my plans, which is, in my case, <coughs> um, the ERG video directory. So this is the one I actually downloaded, the Hunter Allen plan. And basically, it adds it to my list. I actually have another one here that I'd prefer to, to mess with, my ERG video training plan. So now I've actually added two. And likewise, I can remove plans, right? So I'll, I'll put it back. Good enough. Now, what did that do? Well, we noticed that I added the Tormala East to my library, that was went correctly, but now I actually have select ERG video from a training plan. And let's just pick my ERG video training plan, this is back in 2012, and instead of a bunch of uh, uh, individual workouts based on a particular video, so when I, when I do this, 
Bass Tempo Trio in Mallorca, all of these are based on just that video. These are different variations of the video itself uh, to ride, and it, and it manages the playback and things like that. When I do select ERG video from a training plan, I picked the Hunter Allen plan, and actually the very first thing that it was asking me to do is the threshold test. And this comes up and says, oh, it's not part of your library. That's okay. Let's see if I can add, let's see if I actually have it around, hang it around, library and training plans, add, ah, look at that. I'll add it. Excellent. Okay. So, okay. So now let's go select my Hunter Allen plan. Today is September 18th, 2015 and it picks the threshold test HD. So I'm to do that today. So um, you would you would come to ERG video. Let me just show you that whole process because that's awesome. Um, so today I would open my ERG video. This is the scan phase and uh, so it comes up with a blank sheet. I say select from ERG video plan Boom. Today, you're riding the threshold test. Let's ride. Boom. We go. It's as easy as that. And tomorrow, when I open up ERG video, it's going to point me to the... Well, tomorrow... Uh, tomorrow yeah, uh, the 20th, it's going to be uh, Base Tempo Virginia. I actually don't have that in my, in my uh, current library. But if I pick... Say I picked my ERG video training plan in 2012... On September 25th, 2012, I am to do Tempo Pyrenees Foothills. And it would pick that workout, and off I go. So that's uh, tremendous. Okay, a couple of things I didn't cover were setting up rides and configuring riders, bikes, and devices. I'm going to dedicate those to separate videos because this one has gone fairly long.